What's up, tribe? How you guys doing? This is going to be your review for Cherish Today, Season 1, Episode 6. So, it's two years later. They've been married for two years, and they are sort of coming out of that whole honeymoon phase and moving into some, some, some real... For me, the biggest thing here is communication. Um, Gently seems to have evolved into everything she said she never wanted to be, which is basically a housewife. Um... They're getting ready. Evan is, has a big day. He's got some investors. The, the The company has been going for two years. It seems like the company's been doing well. But they have some investors that are coming through. And the investors are bringing in a capital venturist. A capital venturist. Anyway, somebody that um, his partner says is just a data raider. She just wants to come in. She wants to rate our data. She could care less about our app. And I'm not feeling it. Evan is like, I'm not really feeling it either. However... She's trying to figure out a way to get us paid. We got these investors. You know, we've been doing this for two years. We've been doing pretty well, but this is going to take us to the next level. Um, Evan is looking for his favorite shirt that he wants for this suit. And he's asking gently where it is. And you see him like, please say she got it. Please say she got it. And she's able to tell him exactly where it is in the dry cleaning. She's out on the balcony cleaning up. Like she, I immediately see she has become what she does, what she never wanted to be. You know, all in the name of love. So I said, okay, we have a, Houston, we have a problem. Um, they're still real affectionate and lovey-dovey and everything, but you could tell there's something sort of under the surface with, with Gently. Now, Evan is oblivious to it all. He's in his zone trying to do things with the, you know, trying to get that business to the next level, and he is in a zone. Like, he don't see all of this. Um... Even to the point where the cleaning lady comes around and gently done done have her work. And the cleaning lady is giving gently the side eye. And it's funny because as soon as I saw the, gen the cleaning lady, I was like, gently got a cleaning lady? Like, again, it just seems like things that I would never have expected her to have and or be doing. And the whole episode, we see gently sort of flashing back to the last week's episode with the priest telling her what her role would be. And she said, you know, he's just trying to turn me into a housewife, which that's what she's become. And we see her flashing back to her conversation with Ben, where Ben is like, look, he ain't, he ain't, you just got to accept that we come from different worlds. And like, he may mean well, he's not a bad person, but he just don't come from where we come from. So, Jen Lee has a meeting with Miss um, Luma, and he said something like, good luck with your meeting with Miss Luma today. And she said, oh, you remembered. And again, that gives you another hint that they're not really on the same page, that she feels like, what she has going on, he doesn't, she's not feeling like he values what she has going on as much as what he has going on. And there's a part of me that is sitting here going, why haven't you done more? Like, they get into, I, I'm, I'm jumping around a little bit, but they get into a fight later on and he makes a comment to her about, you are financially in like like you're at a good like financially you don't have to worry about no bills no mortgage no nothing and so from that point of view i'm sort of like and because you haven't had to worry about those things why haven't you done more gently why have you allowed yourself to be relegated to a housewife because again we're skipping two years so i don't know how we got to this point but at some point, you had to be complacent in that process. Maybe you didn't realize you were being complacent. Maybe you didn't realize you were allowing yourself to evolve or devolve, I should say, to a, from a world traveler who has a free spirit, blah, 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 to pick it up dry cleaning. And again, it's nothing wrong with wanting to help your husband in his endeavors. But at your own, at the risk of your own growth, it's not good. And that's kind of where we are. So we see Evan meet with the the investors and they convince him to take a meeting with this venture capitalist. His partner is not on board at all, any way, shape, or form. He is like, I thought we were on the same page. We know this is not what we want. This is not the direction we want to go in. We're doing fine the way we are. We don't have basically we don't have to sell our soul to the devil. And Evan's thing is I get it and we are on the same page, but it doesn't hurt to hear her out. And then we see Evan flash back to having a conversation with his aunt where she said, you know, I just saw an article, the top 25, you know, tech influencers in California. And why aren't you on that list, nephew? And he was like, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm working on it. And so you feel like in his mind is like, this is what's going to get me on that list. Like, this is that precipice that's going to put me in that next plot, spot. So then we see 
gently meeting with Miss Luma. Now, Miss Luma has a new, and I, I understand that maybe she couldn't work for Miss Luma anymore because that was a live-in situation, and maybe she needs someone full time to help her out. Um, but she's got some new, new young guy who poor thing. He's scared of his own shadow, so you know he's scared of Miss Luma, child. Um, but what is happening is is that Miss Luma is up for this job where she will basically be talking about her experience in the industry, introducing films, and basically talking through the film, like backstories and that kind of thing. And it's a um it's a situation, it's a PBS. And it seems like it's a it's a done deal. Like this is something and of course she's happy for her, you know, um Jelly's happy for her and they talking, you know, they having a good time. But you could tell that you could tell that they don't spend as much time together as they once did. You could you could pick up on that. So later on we see Miss Luma's um I guess it's her agent, her manager. Um you they talk like they've been together for years and basically she has to break the news to Miss Luma that she didn't get the job, that other people came out the woodwork and they've gone they went with someone who's more um has more influence, who's more known. And Ms. Loma is definitely disappointed and gently is upset. She's very upset. She goes outside. Evan calls her on FaceTime. She goes outside and she's trying to tell Evan why she's upset and that she's upset. And he's, and he's like, what's wrong? You're crying. What's the problem? He did talk to her first about what was going on with her before he asked her what he need for what he needed. And he basically told her, look, I have this last minute dinner party situation. Can you help me out? And she's like, just text me what you need. But you see it. Like, you just see it. So, she ends up talking to the agent later on when she's getting ready for the party. And her and the agent are sort of um, commiserating about what can we do better? What can we, you know, upset about Miss Luma? Like, this is just so unfair. It's ridiculous. And gently comes up with the idea of a podcast. She said, look. Everybody and their cousin got a podcast. And people find the most quirky things that they want to listen to on a podcast. I listen to true crime. I love true crime podcasts. You know what I mean? And the agent was like, oh my gosh, that is a great idea. Let's make it happen. I can't wait to tell Miss Luma. We're going to get this going. So, Jenly is excited. I mean, you could see that that the fire has been sparked. This is like the probably the first time in a long time that she's found something that she's going to be passionate about, that she's excited about. Evan comes home and she's ready to tell him about this podcast. And Evan is focused on his dinner party. He's focused on this situation with the business. And Jimmy gets upset. And that's when they have the argument. And that's when he... You know, she says, you know, I just wanted to tell you about my day. I just wanted to tell you about something I'm excited about. And you you just blew me off. And he said, well, can we, like, I didn't blow you off. I just said, can we talk about it later? Like, I really, we got a couple of hours to get ready for dinner and make this happen. So they, and that's when he throws a comment at her about, you know, basically, I provide this great life for you. What you tripping about? And she said, you know what? You're right. You are absolutely correct. Like, I ain't even mad that you reminded me. You are absolutely correct. But in that moment, I think that's when she, I think that's when it switched for her. And she realized how much she has given up. How much she's given up of herself. Um, they end up having sex in the shower, which was interesting. Uh, I guess she just needed that moment. I don't know. So their guest shows up, and it's this woman, um, you know, like I said, the venture capitalist. Um, she comes in, and, you know, they go through all the niceties, and, and, I mean, Gently got it going on, honey. Gently, she's speaking, she's got food from, she's got Swiss food. She's got Portuguese, I guess it's the woman's from Portuguese. Her husband is from um, Switzerland, and, I mean, she's doing it up, right? She's, she's speaking in different languages. I mean, she is impressive. She got the right liquor. She got the right wine. Like, Gently has become, I don't know, she watched some YouTube videos. I don't know, she went to that library where she owed all them damn fines. Miss Luma owed them fines and got some books on, on dinner party etiquette. Like, I don't know, because, I mean, we know she's well-traveled. She wasn't a dumb woman. But just understanding functioning in his world. Like, she clearly has done her, her, her um, due diligence. Maybe that's what she been doing for the last two years. I don't know. Um, but... 
the at a certain point the husband and he says look I know I'm you know I'm just I'm just here you know I don't have nothing to do with the business side I just you know I just I'm here to support my wife so at a certain point it's just Evan and the woman and gently gets a phone call from the agent and Je the agent says look do you know where I am right now she was like no she said well my my, my, my son gave me these tickets to this event da 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 but long story short I'm at a podcast studio and there are people here and that is what they do is podcasting and she said well get some names you know network let's find some people that we're going to connect with and she was like yeah but here's the problem I don't I don't know nothing. I don't know nothing about this. I don't know nothing about podcasting. I'm not really sure what the vision is. I don't know how to sell it. I need you to come down here because I don't know how to sell this. But this is like a golden opportunity that has fallen into our lap. So of course now gently is torn between going to this event and staying for Evan's dinner party. And this happened before the guests arrived, so I kind of jumped ahead of myself a little bit. Um Jenny and Evan end up getting into an argument. We see the flashback of the argument. Now, once the guests arrive, you know, they play nice and they, you know, say all the right things and give each other the right looks. But you could, again, there's a tension there. Evan's thing is, I don't know what I said to piss you off. Like, I, I really don't know what I did or said to piss you, piss you off. But, like, for real, can we, like, I don't want to fight anymore. Like, I don't want to argue. I don't want to fight. Like, what did I do? Tell me what I did. Let me fix it. Let's move on. And, of course, and generally, you can't fix it. Like, because this ain't for you to fix. It's for me to fix. So, um, Evan generally ends up going outside and talking to the husband. And they get to talking about traveling. And, you know, gently was like, I used to travel all the time. But, basically, the last couple of years, I really haven't gone anywhere. Because, you know, basically, I fell in love and got married. And, um... He says, well, and he basically he tells her, well, you know, it ain't, it ain't nothing but a thing. Like, traveling is traveling. Like, you you know, if you love it, you do it. Basically telling her that you can make it happen. Like, you ain't got to sit here and not do what you want to do. You can make it happen. You know what I mean? You know, and, and when they were arguing, you know, Jilly was making the comments, you don't care about anything that doesn't have anything to do with you. Like, just those, and again, this is where this communication is breaking down. Because Evan really doesn't understand what he's doing wrong. And let's be clear, he's not doing anything wrong. He's doing what he's been doing. You've allowed the situation to get here, and now you're upset at your situation. And you feel like he's not paying attention, and he's not... um giving you the appropriate attention i guess but um and here's where the writing is great because i really see both sides of this story i don't i'm not mad i'm not fussing at, at gently i ain't fussing at evan i really do see both sides of it um but at the end of the day evan ends up talking to the venture capitalist and she tells him point blank she said look your app is cute or whatever but let's be clear you're sitting on a gold mine the data that you've been collecting for your app is what is really your money maker. That's how you're going to make your money, which is exactly what his partner told him, which is exactly what his partner did not want, did not want their company to be rated for the data. And she tells Evan, look, there's a difference between being rich and being wealthy. And I get it that you want to do all these wonderful and great things and you want to help the community. But let's be clear. Making money should be your first priority. Bill Gates does great things for the community, but he was wealthy first. We're talking about generational wealth. We're talking about never have to work again wealth. Like, that's what I'm offering you. That's what I'm telling you I can do for you. And so now Evan is in a situation where he got to make a decision about whether he's going to sell out his partner or he going to stick to stick to the plan. Gently makes a decision where she leaves. Now, here's the thing. Had y'all had some communication, I don't think it was anything wrong with Gently leaving at that point. Everybody knows that the dinner party was last minute. Everybody understands that people have lives. You did your thing. You impressed them. You spoke Portuguese. You spoke this. You had food from here. You had the right wine. You had the right, um, um, uh, was it, was it whiskey or cognac or whatever the woman was drinking. You did your, you did your job. And then you say, hey, I had a prior engagement. I'm going to leave you and Evan. To do do what you do. And I would have even said to the husband. You want to hang out? Or you want to stay here? Because I, I got to go take care of something. You go down to the damn podcast place. You rub elbows. You want, you you know you talk the talk for an hour. And you bring your ass home. I 
don't see the problem with doing both. But because y'all didn't have a conversation about it, because you didn't explain to Evan what was going on, and because Evan, you didn't take the time to listen, because you were caught up in your situation, and gently you were caught up in your situation, now you got this breakdown of communication, and everybody mad. Anyway, that's where the episode ended. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments. Peace.